great rising good morning good saturday good random video posting um so i just i was at my altar this morning um just talking and going through my dreams and i got the nudge to kind of just sh share so this is random story time um just a little background oh oh Hi, I'm Naya Shalom. Look, cuz, I remembered. <laughs> Hi, I'm Naya Shalom. Thank you for coming to Grow With Naya. This is my video channel where I, basically I'm sharing my, um, my personal spiritual journey as well as things I'm learning along the way. So whether I'm learning something about a ritual, the moon, dreams, astrology, numerology, or if it's just I feel something on my spirit I wanna share, then that's what I'm gonna do. So today, actually I've been thinking about doing dreams for a minute, not interpreting them or how to interpret, I guess this would be in a way how to interpret dreams. So, um, yeah, so let's just get into it. Um, and I'm sorry, I'm messing with my locks, but I am about almost 10, I'm almost a year in. I'm almost a year in, and this hang time is amazing. And I was just looking like this lock that's fall, he's falling over my third eye. And like the, those of you that don't know that my, um, know me personally, my sides were shaved. And I mean, just look at that, look at that hang time blessed so those of you if you're starting your lock journey thinking about it trust the process i started my own as two strands twist and i'm so excited about how they've turned out how they look i got like a gang of gray hair in there my mom consistently points out but <laughs> it's all good it's wisdom and i've already decided once i get to a certain point i'm just gonna go completely gray and then y'all can call me storm okay so to the point um so I am clairvoyant and um, I'm still working on outside of dreams, getting messages, but my dreams are always super vivid. Um, I always receive a message. Lately, I've been receiving a message both for myself and something um, for the collective. So the way my process works um, or just even just at night. So in my room, I have a little mini altar for myself in my room. It does have water on it. It's got a candle on it on a good day when my kids aren't dropping stuff in my candle. I sleep with my candle lit. I also have a selenite. Um, it's actually a candle holder, but it looks like a little tower of selenite under my bed. And I have um, a piece in my pillow. Um, and I started doing that because um, I was out randomly and I was discussing something with this guy at the flea market that I get crystals from. And a lady was there and she stopped. I was getting ready to walk away. She grabbed me. She's like, do you have any selenite? Yeah, I got some. She's like, you need to sleep one with some under your pillow. Okay. So I've been doing it ever since because, I mean... She doesn't know me. There wasn't anything that I said that would have indicated something, but she felt called to tell me that. So I felt called to listen. So I've been sleeping with selenite pillow. I have a lot of selenite around, like I see these little, little balls that I think are super cute. Um, and this one sits inside this little crevice of this amethyst cluster. This amethyst, the story behind this amethyst cluster is I had a dream that people were chunking amethyst at me. Just like they're um, at a party and the neighbors are literally throwing clusters of amethyst in the air and they are landing in the yard that I'm at. I wasn't at my house, but the land yard where I was, they were throwing amethyst clusters so that same the next day i went to the same place and i got um he had amethyst clusters which is something he had not had on his table before and i'm just like maybe i'm supposed to have one i've had another i've got another big piece over there i've had for a while but this one looks more like what was in my dream so and i've had it ever since um and i love it so 
here's the um, story about my amethyst and selenite. Oh, and actually this came to me. Um, my moldavite also came to me in a dream. I, um, the short version of the dream is it was around, it followed me. So the first time I saw it was in a crystal shop. So there's an apothecary in my um, town and in my dream, that's where I was, but it was much bigger in my dream. And she does carry Moldavite. This is actually where I got this piece. And she, you know, for some reason I was buying some then. When the dream changes, I still have the Moldavite. So I'm someplace else, doing something else, but the Moldavite is still with me. And at some point I end up in a dystopian time and we're captured by the military. And when the military soldiers are not looking, I say to myself, the Moldavite will free us. Like that's what I said is the Moldavite will free us. And so I put the Moldavite on my cuffs and it opened them up. And then I basically freed whoever I could using the Moldavite and yeah, we got away free and then I woke up. So that next morning, again, I went to the shop and you know, Moldavite, for those of you that know anything about Chris Moldavite is not cheap, not cheap. I am not, at this stage in the game, I am not balling. So to buy this little piece, when I did, I did it cause I had a dream about it. And when I told the lady about the dream, she was like, yeah, it's transformative and it will free you. So I have had it ever since. Um, so that's kind of, how clear my dreams are usually like that's kind of just how my dreams work out so um i wanted to tell you about the two that i well the couple that i wrote down so i do like some of them i didn't remember whole things i, I just remembered parts but the part i remembered was important so like this one i remembered something about atlanta and my parents and I'm moving there. And if I'm looking this way, that's because, so that y'all can see, yes, I write them down. Just like, and all of this, everything you see here is dream. This is all this, all, all that is dream. And that's not even every page. That's just what I showed you. And that's just from this morning. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, I remembered something about Atlanta, my parents and I moving there, a big house and we all lived there. So I was like, yo, Spirit, are you telling me I need to move to the ATL? No. Are you saying I need to travel to Atlanta? And again, yes. So, all right. And I was like, I asked again, is this, this a call for me to travel, period? And I got another yes. And I was just like, okay, so I know I'm planning something for my solar return. It's going to be about a week or so before my actual solar return and birthday. Um, but I am traveling and I actually used astro cartography to decide where I was going to go. So when I did it, this particular spot said it would be good for uh, me, my spiritual growth. So I'm hoping I find a shop or something. I'm excited because I'm like, what is something I meet somebody, something happens, like I get gain a teacher or something. Like I'm really excited to see what's going to happen. Um, but yeah, that was that. Um, there was something also in my dream about volunteering at the hospital. And for my current day job, I actually helped to organize a sending cards and something, um, cards to both the frontline workers and the patients in the COVID wing. So I feel like that was a call to say, you know what, that was, that was a good thing. That was the right thing to do. And I've been, uh, I feel like this, this is the second in the last couple of days, humanitarian type dream I've had. And the moon is in Pisces and I am a growth, my growth number is nine. So I could be, and I just crossed that threshold to where I can feel my growth number. You don't really start to actually feel it until you're 40. So I'm now, I'm at that place. And yes, I did wait till over 40 for those who haven't watched any of my first videos to decide to have a spiritual awakening. It's true master number 11, late bloomer. All right. <laughs> um, but here's the dream. Okay, so the first dream um, I'm in a building that looks like the first floor of my job in our main cafe. So it's like a lot of glass and 
you know, lunchroom type tables. Um, and for some reason, it's like a conversation around R. Kelly. I don't know. I haven't listened to R. Kelly in a long time. Like, I didn't listen to it last night. It, nothing with him in it. Nothing he produced. I have no idea where the heck this came from. Um, but then I, like, as I'm writing, so I'm going to read it to you the way I wrote it. So then I was like, wait, another dream. So I'm at work, but I'm trying to leave. That's a whole other discussion about me and work. Um, but I'm trying to leave. And I think there is some issue with me going, but um, I got that worked out. I can't remember what the issue was. I just remember there was an issue with me leaving, but I figured it out. And so I was able to work it out. Um, so as I'm leaving, um, there's a security guard, um, an old black man, and he's remarking at why everyone is clustered around the front door. So when I turn, I can see the glass doors of the building and all these people are standing there and they're trying to get in. But he's like, why are you all here? It's the weekend. And that just came to me that it was the weekend. It wasn't a regular work day. It was the weekend. So he's like, why don't y'all just bet, you know, essentially go into one of the other doors. Why are you all at this spot? So I see people are starting to disperse and go to whatever doors they need to. But these two women are still there and they're like, you know, but I sit closer to this door. Why would I go to another door? So I just tell her to let security know um, that it'd be shorter for her to go this way. So I get to my car um, and just to kind of give you some backstory. So I used to have a gold Monte Carlo 2003. The Monte Carlo was my dr dream car, always. Always had been my dream car. My dad had a blue 76 Monte Carlo when I was a toddler, which he then upgraded to a brown 77 Monte Carlo. And I just always thought the Monte Carlo was the best car. So when I learned to drive, I always said that my dream car would be to get a Monte Carlo like my dad's. I wanted a 77 Monte Carlo. Well, when the O3s came out and they had the same body style, I was like, I want that. So at some point I finally managed to get one. I do not have Betty anymore. And yes, I named her Betty. Um, and she was a gold, so similar color to my father's Monte Carlo, and I do miss her. Um, and in my dreams up to this point, that was my car. Um, not only was it my car, it represented my passion. So it was a car, but it was my passion. And some dreams I would be in it and it was out of control. I didn't have any control over it. Um, there were several dreams where I couldn't find it. Like I would be someplace and it would be parked and I would go out looking for it and I couldn't find it. So recently I had a dream and I found my car and I was able to drive it and I had control. So um, this one, though, when I get to my car, it's not the Monte Carlo. Um, it's kind of like, I don't know if it's a Bugatti, but that's the fanciest car name I could think of to uh, uh, relate to what I saw. It looked really futuristic. Like it did not look like a car that existed in our time. It looked really, really futuristic. Um, so I remember opening the door and throwing my stuff in there, but I'm looking at it and like, how the heck do I fit in here? So I'm trying, I remember like trying to bend and fold and it's feeling like I'm gonna get crushed in this car. And then some people came over to help me get into the car. So there was that. And so now I go back to the R. Kelly thing. So now on the R. Kelly thing, it's something about his trial. And it's like his parents were there. I have no idea. I do not remember what R. Kelly's mother looks like. I'm sure that at some point he's shared a picture or something. I don't know what she looks like. I just know this black woman in the dream was supposed to be R. Kelly's mom. And this black man was supposed to be his father. Um, and all these people are just around and everything. And I'm talking to them and she's just talking about how they got roped into this thing like guilty by association. Um, his dad says that something about the bank accounts where, um, so if they looked at the bank accounts, they'd see something and understand, you know, that could probably be what triggered it, but you know, they didn't understand what was happening. Next thing I know, there's somebody trying to rob a place. Yeah. You know, true dream fashion. So somebody's trying to rob the place and I don't know, some group. Um, this is where I'm going to get really cryptic. Um, just, you know, so there's a group of people trying to rob a place. 
I don't know if they said a cure, acoma, I don't know, some some word. Yeah, but whatever they said, someone mentions that that name, um, the person that they named their group after um, worked solo. Sorry, my phone started to ring. Okay, so the group worked um, solo. And um, I don't know, in my dream, I remember looking around at them thinking somebody, they're, they're going to turn on each other. That's what I remember. So they're storming the place and um, it's, at some point somebody grabs me. And so as they're trying to like pull me, they're like, you know, you picture somebody grabbing you and trying to drag you into another area. Um, he's like, where's so-and-so at? And everybody's looking around and they don't see her. So they, he tells somebody to go find her. So she shows back up and looks like she's like, you know, she's got leaves and stuff on her. And she's like, well, I fell down a hill. Oh, okay. But as they're discussing that, he's not paying any attention to me. So I kind of duck out behind him into this other, I found a way out essentially. So I find a way out and I get to the edge of something that's either a stream or a river and I jump in. I can't swim. And apparently in this dream, I still can't swim. So I'm not drowning. I'm kind of just being carried away by the current. And as I'm being carried away, this alien dog comes and saves me. So the alien puppy comes, saves me, pulls me, absolutely pulls me out of the water. And that's where I wake up. So let's go into interpretation. Because I know you're probably at this point like, what the... So, and this is where, if you're trying to do your own dreams, kind of understanding where you are in life, what you have going on and pulling from that, you can absolutely go on the internet and find different things and put plug stuff in. But my mentor, Kai, told me that if I want to strongly use my intuition, I need to lean into that and see what I can interpret on my own. So... I'm going to start with the car because that's the thing that really stuck out to me. And that other dream was about the car and it being a different car. I have gotten the message more than once, whether it is something I pulled on myself, whether it is a pick a card video that I am afraid of my future. And what this meant to me was not seeing a Monte Carlo, but seeing what would be like the equivalent of what would be called a better car is that um, source has something better for me. And all I have to do is just accept it and essentially drive the car. Um, even when I pulled cars this morning, it said like this, um, the message I got, I have some chakra healing cards. And one of the messages is like open to, um, to free my creativity and open to new ideas. So something around creativity and new, new passion is growing. That's for my future because this car looks really futuristic. <laughs> Um, and, and essentially just accepting my path and walking it, um, and understanding that the creator has something better in store for me. I, if I just have to not be afraid of it and accept it and that I'm not going to have to, I'm being guided. And I think that's why there was somebody there to help me get in the car is that I'm being guided. Um, and, but the weight of the, the weight of my purpose is present to me. I won't go super deep in it, but I can tell you like when I first found out I was a master number 11 and what that truly meant, like truly meant if you were to walk in that path. And that was heavy, like that was, that was heavy. And even now, sometimes when I do something and I pull my, pull my purpose in my path, the weight of it sometimes strikes me. And I feel like that's why it felt like I was gonna be crushed in the future, car, futuristic car. Um, the incident with um, the young lady saying that, why would I go walk all that way when this way is shorter? And I feel like that was a call for me to listen to my higher self. I was just listening to David Lyon um, last night before I um, went to bed and the video he posted <clears throat> was essentially about that and one of the things he said was that your higher self has a better vantage point 
So for those of you that believe or are learning, think about your higher self, your soul. It is the part of you that is connected to the most high. It is connected to, it's the part of you that's still connected to source. And it does, there is no time and there's no time. So your higher self isn't just here in what you perceive as a here and now. Your higher source, your higher self is everywhere. So, you know, my higher self can see the various paths I can take and which one is going to be the easiest and is trying to nudge me into the easiest path. But I have to be willing to go. And I feel like um, one of the examples he gave was like there's the three paths and you may think that this path, this straight path is the most logical. This is the way that you should go. But your higher self is like, no, take this curved one over here. And if you go down the path, um, it's actually the shortest distance. Um, I think one of my uh, mentors at work used to say, take the path of least resistance. So, and I'm always saying I want to be aligned with ease. So I think this is a call to listen to a nudge to do something and that it would make my journey, my, me tapping into my gifts, me moving forward, maybe shorter, faster, easier. And I just got a confirmation that that was a yes. Um, <laughs> so that's, you know, a bit on that. Um, so the thing about the people being uh, pulled into the mess with R. Kelly. Again, I have no idea why R. Kelly. No idea. But um, being pulled in, I feel like this is a call to, you know, just be mindful of who I'm spending time with, who I'm sharing energy with. Um, Chiron is in my 11th house and I think Uranus is transiting my 11th house too. So my 11th house is really activated right now. And I've been feeling this, like everything regarding people in my life has been like, so whether it is taking care of my community, whether it is who am I sharing energy with, who is taking my energy, um, all of those things are been major themes for me right now. Um, the rest of that dream with the people robbing the place, that wasn't for me or about me specifically. That was something for the collective. Um, and that's all I'm going to say on that right now. Just a group of folks and they're going to turn on each other. That's what I know is that it's a group of folks and they're going to turn on each other and it's not going to be good. Something's going to, like, like they're going to be distracted and next thing you know, they're going to turn on each other. Um, and I did get confirmation that the dog really was an alien. And I, that has been happening with the Moldavite. I think this is like the third or fourth either alien or space related dream. I had at least one or two dreams with an actual, this person or something is an alien. And then I had one dream where I was full blown on a spaceship. You know, it happens. Um, it happens. So those are just at story time. That was, you know, the weird dreams I have and had and how I work through them. Like this is one of the few mornings where I had dreams. And when I asked, did I get all the messages? I got a yes. And so I didn't feel like I needed to throw any cards. Cause sometimes if it's really like, I've had some dreams and it's just like, what the, what, what just like the other night was so cinematic, but I, I, it was so much. I was just like, I needed cards. So I threw cards, um, yesterday morning to get additional clarity on what the dream was trying to tell me. Um, and yeah, this morning was really clear that I got what I was supposed to get. And I thought that was dope. So that's my story time. I do plan on do posting two videos coming up in the next couple of days. I've got the Zodiac signs for the astrology series. I am working on that this weekend and I decided to do something new. So I host a goddess gathering. Um, 
the link to the group on Facebook is in my link tree. I'll make sure that I put that in this um, description box. But yeah, um, I was going to do like just a short recap of where we are at, kind of what we've talked about um, in the Goddess Gathering, just so that if anyone's curious, they want to know, trying to decide if it's something they want to be a part of, you kind of know where we're at. You can jump in because um, we don't meet again until the 24th. So you kind of got some time to like, if you want to jump in and kind of do some stuff this week or read at all, because we are uh, we are reading Sacred Woman together. Um, and my intention for 2021 is for us to go through all the gateways together. So we're doing that um, because I wanted to do it and I felt like I didn't necessarily want to do it by myself. So that's kind of, I was in a sister circle and then they stopped. So and nobody, I kind of waited around to see if anybody that I felt like would have would have started a new one, but no one has. I think only one of the people in the group, she did, she's doing stuff in person and it's a whole plague. I'm sorry. I have sons. I have a mother whose immune comp system is not, it's, it's a slightly compromised and I just can't. So my stuff is virtual. We meet via Zoom and I, um... My intention is just for us to go through this expansion. I also got that from David Lyon. I'm gonna have to drop his channel because I've like just like you know plugged him twice. So I'm gonna have to like get um plug his channel. Y'all make sure if y'all you know go to it to drop in the comments that I plug this channel. Um, but yeah, I did this and um I told them in our last session I didn't want us to say that we're on a healing journey anymore. That I wanted us to say that we're on a journey of expanding, expanding our connection to the divine, expanding our awareness that as um ladies, women, um goddesses that we are divine do not allow anything to deter that we are also connected to source. We are a direct connection to source energy, um, and that we need to have a balance of divine feminine and masculine energy. We shouldn't be leaned all the way to one side or the other, except in certain situations, certain situations require that you are like all divine feminine. Certain situations may require that you are like all divine masculine, but all life requires that you're both in harmony. So, um, again, thanks for listening to my random story time video. I'm Naya Shalom. Check out my link tree in the description box. If you'd like to leave a donation, my cash app is in the description box. Thank you again. I am at 21 subscribers. This is so cool to see this growing and I just can't wait to see how we grow throughout the year. Hope you have a great Saturday and...